Hello and welcome to Cisco ASA Training 101. My name is Don Crawley. I'm from SoundTraining.net. We're the Seattle, Washington-based provider of learning resources and accelerated training for IT professionals. And today we're doing configuring transparent mode on the Cisco ASA security appliance. This is an update to Chapter 11 in my book, The Accidental Administrator, Cisco ASA Security Appliance. The software version that we're using here is 8.4. There was a change in the configuration starting with version 8.4, and it applies to version 8.4 and later, at least through version 9. Here's the exercise uh, diagram. As you can see, we have a management workstation, an ASA, which will be configured in transparent mode, and a router. And the thing that I want you to notice here is that everything is on the same IP subnet. We're using the 192.168.1.0 slash 24 subnet. And that's the thing about transparent mode. The Probably the most common mode for running a firewall is in routed mode, where you have a different IP subnet on the inside and the outside. The reason you would configure a firewall in transparent mode is if you want to drop it into an existing network, and it becomes a Layer 2 device. It still does traffic filtering. It does traffic inspection, but it doesn't do NAT, for example, network address translation. Again, you have the same IP subnet on both the inside and the outside, and the IP address on the firewall is configured strictly for purposes of management. Here's your disclaimer. This video is provided solely as a courtesy to you, our viewer. No guarantees whatsoever, as usual. Do not attempt these procedures on a production firewall without first testing them for security and suitability in a lab environment. Performing these procedures will clear your firewall's existing configuration, so you'll need to make sure you have a current backup, and as usual, performing these procedures may open your firewall to the public internet and subject your network to attack. Once again, have current backups and take precautions, including data encryption and additional access controls to protect sensitive data. Always do that while you're learning a new technology. Here are the prerequisites. In order to do this exercise, you'll need experience working in the Cisco command line environment and unrestricted privilege mode access to a Cisco ASA security appliance. The one that I'm using is a Cisco ASA 5505 security appliance with a base license. You can certainly do these procedures on a 5510, 20, 40, 50, uh, one of the new models. Uh, the procedures are going to be very much the same. The difference is that you won't be configuring VLAN interfaces. Uh, which do exist on the ASA 5505. You'll also need a computer serving as a management workstation, console cable connected to the serial port on your management workstation and the console port on the ASA, and terminal emulation software such as PuTTY or TerraTerm or Secure CRT. Here's a summary of the steps. We're going to switch the ASA to transparent mode, then we'll enable and configure each of the physical interfaces. We will configure each of the VLAN interfaces and assign them to bridge groups. We're going to assign an IP address to the bridge virtual interface, that's the BVI for device management, and then we're going to enable the HTTP server for management through the ASDM graphical interface. So let's start by checking the current mode of the firewall, and we'll use the command show firewall for that. And you'll see that it's currently in router mode, so we need to switch it to transparent mode. We'll go into configuration mode to do that. Config T. And the command is firewall transparent. That switches the mode. It takes just a moment, as you can see. And let's test it with a command show firewall once again. And this time it should show that the mode is transparent. That's what we expected. And in fact, that's what we got. Now let's configure our physical interfaces. So we're going to start with E0 slash 0. So interface E0 slash 0. That's Ethernet 0 slash 0. And we'll assign it to VLAN 2. That's typically the outside port on the firewall. And VLAN 2 is commonly used. In fact, the default configuration sets it up as the outside, so we'll go with that. Uh, with the command switch port, access VLAN 2. Make sure to enable the ports with the command no shutdown. I noticed in a lot of the online documentation it doesn't include that. That's the default state that they're shut down, so you've got to make sure and enable them. The physical interfaces with the command no shutdown. Now let's go to E0 slash 1 and do the same thing. Interface E0 slash 1. Well, almost the same thing. We're going to assign it to VLAN 1. With the command switch port, access VLAN 1. And again, no shut or shut down to enable it. So that takes care of the physical interfaces. Let's go into the VLAN interfaces now and take care of them. So we'll go to interface VLAN 2, which is going to be our outside. So we'll give it the name outside, name if 
outside and it will automatically set the security level to zero by default so you don't have to do that and then we're going to also assign it to the bridge group and this is new starting with version 8.4 the ASA now supports bridge groups and the way to think about a bridge group is that it's kinda of like a VLAN um, traffic from one br bridge group doesn't encounter traffic from another bridge group it's just a, a way of isolating traffic so um, we're gonna set it up with bridge group 1 both of our interfaces are going to be on bridge group 1, so the command is bridge group oops, 1, and that takes care of it. Now let's go to the other VLAN, so interface VLAN 1, and name if inside. Notice that it sets the security level to 100 by default. If for some reason you want to use different names for your interfaces than inside and outside, then you'll need to set the security levels manually with the command security level. Um, I think most people probably just go ahead and use inside and outside because uh, that's pretty obvious what they're doing then. Uh, let's go ahead and assign the inside interface to bridge group one as well. Bridge group one. And now we're done with the interface configuration. And and actually, the firewall will now process traffic through the, the transparent mode, but uh, we don't have a way of managing the firewall uh, through SSH sessions or through uh, the ASDM. So that's what we're going to do next. We'll uh, go in and assign the firewall an IP address. And this is a global address, and this is also different from the way that it was done in version 8.3 and earlier. We have to assign the global address to the bridge virtual interface, the BVI. So interface... BV, oops, BVI1, and we'll put an address on it, IP address 192.168.1.240. We don't have to explicitly provide a subnet mask as long as we're going with the default. Since this is a Class C, the default is a 24-bit mask that works, so no need to explicitly provide one. You can, or if you're using a non-standard mask, like maybe, a say, a 27-bit mask, then you'd have to do that, but we don't need to do that here. So that gives us our management interface. There's another thing that comes with this, and that is that this then becomes the source address for all of the things like syslog messages and uh, AAA communications, things like that. So you really need that address in there. Let's also set up the ASDM. That's the graphical user interface with the command HTTP server enable. That simply turns it on, and then we have to specify who can connect using the ASDM. So we'll use the command HTTP 0 .0 .0 .0 .0 0.0.0.0.0 inside. And what that means is that any host who's connected to the inside interface is allowed to use the ASDM. You might want to narrow it down a little bit more by uh, explicitly providing the inside uh, IP subnet address, which in our case would have been 192.168.1.0, but really when you say inside, that kind of takes care of it. So that's the steps to set it up, uh, the, set up the ASA as a transparent firewall. Uh, there's a couple of other things just to mention in the process of doing this. Your inside host will have no means of obtaining an IP address from a DHCP server. Uh, that's connected to the outside of the ASA. It will block the DHCP request and response. So in my view, you have three options, uh, one of which is pretty good and the other two are so-so. You can configure your inside host with static IP addresses, which is kind of a pain in the neck, more management overhead there. You can configure a DHCP server on the inside network, which to me makes a lot of sense. You can either use the ASA or you could set up a Windows or a Linux box as the DHCP server. Or you can actually configure access control lists on the ASA to allow DHCP traffic to flow uh, through the ASA to the outside and responses from the outside back to the inside if you have a DHCP server on the outside. It's a pain in the neck to do that because once you start configuring access control lists, there's that nasty thing that they do where they block all traffic that's not explicitly permitted. So it's really kind of a pain to do that. I think your best bet is probably just to set up a DHCP server on the inside subnet. So that's how you set it up. Um, if you'd like more information, you can visit our website at www.soundtraining.net. I blog at soundtraining.net slash blog. And in fact, uh, this procedure is uh, a blog post. So if you want to follow along, just go visit the blog and you can see it there. You can also follow us on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter. If you'd like more videos, go to our video channel at 
www.soundtraining.net slash video. And if you'd like the companion book, it's available in our bookstore at www.soundtraining.net slash bookstore. Well, I hope it's been helpful for you. For Soundtraining.net, I'm Don Crawley. I'll see you next time.